So, you'd like to import a mini truck from Japan or another JDM vehicle. I just went through this very long process of searching for, going through auctions, getting shipped, getting imported, getting registered, inspected, and fixed up. This is my 1994 Suzuki Carry, and I thought I would share with you uh, everything that I've learned. Hopefully it saves someone some time and gives them a little bit of a better idea as to how to do this. The first thing I'd recommend is just go and read this Witty Mellon DIY how to import a JDM key class mini truck into the US. This person went through and did a lot of research about how to import a vehicle yourself and how to end with success, uh, including having PDFs that allow you to fill out correctly the various forms that are required. And this explains much more and much better than I'll, I will be able to. I happen to go with a company called Japan Car Direct. There are several companies that allow you to give you a search interface to look for the vehicles, the makes, models, and features that you're looking for, and they will put in bids for you, and hopefully you will win a, win a vehicle. Then they can arrange freight and insurance and all the logistics for you. They can also, when you're, when you're bidding on a vehicle, arrange for inspections, and then they're just, these guys were fantastic. Awesome feedback, very quick turnaround on vehicles that I was interested in. They send you a video uh, of their overview. They, they're basically reading the auction sheet in Japanese and giving you all of the details and telling you what their opinion is of these vehicles. Uh, so in my case, I was able to find what I was looking for. It took me maybe three weeks to end up finding exactly what I wanted and winning an auction. Then they arranged for freight to, in my case, the Baltimore seaport in the US uh, and insurance and all of that. It did take some time to come over on, on the ship, five, six weeks, quite a while. So the next thing is, how do you know where your boat is? I found a nice tool called Vessel Finder, which tracks all manner of cargo ships across the world. And you can see exactly where your ship is at any given point in time. Very nice. So as the ship is traveling, in the U.S., you'll have to fill out uh, something called an ISF, an import security filing. And that is what tells uh, customs that, that this is coming. Uh, it's just some basic information about what type the vehicle is. Uh, and the easiest way to do this is to go to uh, uh, easyisf.com, a place where you can fill out that ISF and get that submitted. Uh, or you can do it yourself. It's it's up to you, but that does need to be uh, that does need to be sent in before your uh, before your ship arrives. So once that ship arrives, you'll get a notice from from the terminal operator. I learned that the seaport has both a seaport operator, and in the case of Baltimore, it's Norton Lilly. They they operate the Dundalk Marine Terminal, and then my truck was going to this. Shed 13. And Shed 13 had a particular operator, and that was Ports America. So just trying to figure out where the truck is and what the next steps are was a little bit challenging. I maybe made the mistake of trying to move too quickly, and in bureaucratic processes, that's probably not the best plan. This is a game of your, your freight being put on hold and then ultimately those holds being cleared. My first, my first hold was with the USDA. I have no idea what they were looking for. Maybe seeds, dirt, things that shouldn't come in from an agricultural perspective. Eventually, after calling people, that had cleared, which is great. But just trying to reach USDA was difficult to get hold of them in the first place. You would think that the CBP information is up to date on their website, but unfortunately it's not. So they have a phone number that lists vehicle imports exports for Baltimore. And that phone number just goes to the seaport. But in my case, they had moved the imports to a different office than the exports. And the imports were at a strange location at the BWI airport. So I had to visit the BWI airport in order to get the form 7501, the CBP 7501. This is where I provide them with my bill of lading, 
that's a very important document. The bill of lading number is important for getting your freight, for dealing with anybody at the seaport, and for CBP filling out this 7501. I went all the way to Baltimore to, to sorry, to BWI, and found the right CBP people. But unfortunately, it got a new hold put on it after that, which was from Customs, which you'd think is the same as CBP, but it's not. So there was nothing I could do. I had to go home and wait for that to be cleared. So once all of the, and mind you, I had to go rent a trailer in order to move this vehicle. So the logistics of trying to arrange for that rental and get there, get a friend to help, uh, is just rather difficult. So once I thought that everything was cleared, the customs was cleared, I scheduled a new time, I got my trailer, and I went up there uh, and did manage to get my 7501 signed and pay my taxes, uh, my tariffs, on that import. Now, once that's all paid, what's supposed to happen is the port operator is to give you a, um, a delivery order, which basically has the same information as the arrival notice, but that's what is supposed to state that every every hold is cleared. Now, just because all the holds are cleared doesn't mean a new hold won't come up. And in my case, it certainly did. So when I visited CBP, and that's what this picture is, this is CBP, uh, I also gave them my DOT form to make sure I had that filled out correctly. The DOT form is, as far as I know, effectively saying that that this is an old vehicle. It's, it's meeting the requirements of DOT for import, meaning that it's older than 25 years. The EPA form, similarly, is stating that you know this, this vehicle predates emissions requirements. So that's what's going to sort of help you out when you go register at the DMV later and make sure that you're not having to get a, uh, an emissions inspection. So now with my CBP 7501 in hand, my DOT and EPA 3520 in hand, uh, I wandered off to the seaport. Now, what I learned, you can't just go into the seaport. You can't just show up at the, uh, the, the terminal where your, your property is. Um, there's something called TWIC. I guess this is a registration that you can do, which certifies you to be able to go to a seaport. There's various safety rules. You have to wear a safety vest. You can't go to places that you're not supposed to go. And that's what that uh, annual registration of TWIC gets you. But as someone who isn't importing things day in, day out, you'll end up going to a TWIC escort service. So near the seaport, there's several companies which have their TWIC and have a bunch of people that are certified to take you, to escort you onto the seaport to get your property. So I went to the TWIC escort service, and I had mentioned uh, I'd mentioned the delivery order earlier, and fortunately they were able to help me out and copy over all the information from my arrival notice over to the delivery order so that I could get in and actually get my truck. So once that was all filled out, and once the seaport had closed down for an hour and a half for lunch, the entire seaport closes down, so once we waited for long enough and were able to get onto the, the port, we arrived at this, um, at the particular shed where my truck was. Now, this process, if you see all these passive aggressive signs, uh, you, it's very soup Nazi. You have to stand at a certain place, you wait until you're called, you hand over your papers, they look at it, they tell you all the things that are wrong, and then you wait some more. In my case, a new hold came on, which was actually from the freight operator. This doesn't make a lot of sense because it had been a week since this had been dropped off. Uh, the freight company, I think, was actually Nissan Motor Vehicles, uh, operates the particular ship that mine was on. So uh, somehow they had a hold. So the lovely lady at this at Shed 13 here had to make some calls in order to get that freight hold released. Once that was released, then I needed to call some other phone number and pay my port fee, which was very strange. She just gave me, gave me a phone number where someone answered, hello, and I had to explain to them that I'm trying to pay my port fee, and then I just give this random person my credit card information and a confirmation number. Then I have to wait another 
maybe 20 minutes for that to show up for the port operator so that they can see that I've paid before they'll release the vehicle. So this was much more involved than I would have thought. I started out trying to get to BWI Airport at 8 in the morning when CBP opened and ended up not getting home until 5 p.m. So plan for the whole day. This is an interesting bit of info. Uh, you can, I want to say a 5 foot by 10 foot trailer, which you can get from U-Haul, uh, with a normal flatbed, not necessarily a vehicle trailer, can, uh, can fit these mini trucks. It is tough to fit this, or it's at least dodgy to fit this onto a normal vehicle tra uh, trailer because the wheelbase is pretty narrow, as you can see there. So after this, we drove it home. There wasn't much of a problem, and everything worked out relatively fine. The next steps that I had to do were figure out how to go about getting this thing, um, getting it legal, getting it registered, getting a title, registration, etc. So in our COVID times, we have a long wait. So I had to book with the DMV, and it was like a month out for my, for my registration and title. I had to look up for my particular state what the importing requirements are. So I, after waiting a month for the, for the appointment, I very much had to make sure that every piece of paper that I had was in order. Now, they like to, they're used to seeing things with, here is, here is the title, proof of ownership, here is my proof of residence, here is, you know, all this other paperwork, proof of insurance, um, and then they go ahead and do a registration. But this was an unusual one in that you don't get a, a, a title or sort of a, a proof of ownership outside of what's called an export certificate from uh, when you get a vehicle from Japan. That export certificate is effectively your proof of ownership. Now, the people at the DMV weren't super familiar with this, so they had to call back to headquarters, and I had to get a supervisor to, to figure this out, that yes, the export certificate did show that I'm the owner of the vehicle, and we've shown my proof of address, and everything looks good, and I've certified that I have insurance. Um, liability insurance was a bit interesting because with my insurance provider, I was not able to just go online and put in the VIN. These vehicles don't have a standard VIN. They have a serial number from Suzuki in this case. So I had to call them up, and the person at my insurance company had to do some research and figure out how to put this into their system. But of course, they're glad to take my money. So they eventually got it figured out, and I was able to get this insured. So that was something I had to do before going into the DMV. Um, at this point, once I was complete with the DMV, I had plates, I had a title, and I had a registration. So the last piece is safety inspection. Over the course of the last month, I basically fixed up the truck, everything from changing every fluid, the differentials, the transmission fluid, the everything, um, new spark plugs, new distributor cap, new, you know, just, just about everything, oil change, um, and painted the truck, took everything apart, cleaned it. There's about an inch of you know, 25 years of Japanese dust in every nook and cranny. You can see there's a lot of rust uh, all over the place. So basically every surface got sanded um, and sort of uh, a, a rust preventer put on top of all of it, painted, pulled apart. Uh, and just today, I was able to take it in for a safety inspection. I replaced every light bulb with nice LED ones uh, and past inspection first time. So I'm very excited. I hope this helps out somebody. And uh, thanks a lot for watching.